All right, Kiss Army. Welcome to the Kiss FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today. I'm putting this into your head. I hope you don't do any damage. This is a Kiss-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. Welcome to episode 100 of the Kiss FAQ Podcast. I feel like there should be fireworks exploding around my head or my head exploding because when we started this uh, podcast, you know, I never thought of how many episodes we might do, how often we might do them, or whether we'd get to the century mark, and today we do. So, you know, that's a testament not only to the listeners who have made it possible for us to continue to pontificate on a variety of subjects from week to week, but also to all of the participants on the podcast. And, you know, I'd like to start off with a big thank you. Obviously, Mark and Ken, you're both on the show today. So thank you very, very much for being a part of the KISS FAQ podcast. It's been a wonderful experience for me. Um, I listened back to the first episode yesterday, and I was kind of cringing at how I perceived myself versus how I feel a little bit more comfortable in the captain's chair now. I'm not going to say I still feel totally comfortable putting myself out there, but I think that's probably a good thing if we become a little bit too relaxed Uh, Maybe we lose focus on kind of what we want to be doing. But I'd also like to thank Alex. I mean, he was on that first show. Um, Nigel, of course, was on that first show. Nigel, we haven't seen you in ages. I would love to see you back on the show. Um, Alan, when you join us, you bring a wonderful um, expression of your fandom and the topics that we cover with you. You know, always a pleasure to have you on. Um, Andrew, Catboy, always fun. I'm glad uh, you've started uh, coming back on the show a bit more. Who else we had on? Chris, everyone's favorite moderator on the FAQ message board, Rising Force. You know, we were lucky to have him on for one episode with an interview with Jeff Westlake that he had set up. So thank you, Chris. And thank you, Chris and Gary, for all you do on the FAQ message board. Lonnie, kind of a right-hand man who's covered for me recording on many occasions you know it's been great to have you a part of uh the majority of the shows actually ken's catching you up on my scorecard here you were on 73 episodes so far and ken's sitting on 67 so someone's (laughs) someone there's a little battle going on there mark (laughs) by the way you've been on 51 uh sean haven't seen you in a long time you did four episodes with us and thank you very much hooligans holiday one of the younger members of the board so always great to have those expressions of you know kind of a different perspective than some of those older folk uh michael and andy the two new guys you know uh, both injected a little bit of caffeine andy right uh (laughs) You know, but have had some great stories to tell, both of those uh, new chaps. And, of course, there is also uh, Sammy. Sammy, I haven't forgotten about you. We want to get you on there. So I don't think I've missed anyone going through that quick list. But, you know, when we get to episode 100, um, it's just nice to look back briefly. And, Mark, why did you do it? You know, and and do you, and do you, are you still having are you still having fun? Do you see yourself doing some more episodes and catching up to Lonnie and Ken? Uh, absolutely. I mean, of late, I know I haven't been on it as many the last, you know, couple of episodes, but that's been mainly because, as you know, I'm working on a record that I'm putting out, and that's been kind of eating up a lot of time. And the last week, you know, I know I put up a post somewhere that I've been just so deathly ill. I got so struck down with such a bad flu bug. I don't even know how to even describe it. I was like absolutely horizontal for two days. Like I couldn't even get out of bed, you know. But, uh, I really, really love doing this podcast. It's one of the things I look forward to every week doing, and I look forward to continuing to do it. Why did I do it? Because I started watching the podcast because I became a, you know, a, a regular on the board. I was checking it out all the time and reading things, and I read about this infamous podcast that was starting up. And when I finally found all the necessary links and stuff and started watching it, I was like, you know, I found myself talking along 
with the podcast like whenever you were talking whenever you guys are talking about something i was always trying to like interject my things but you know to the screen but there was nobody really there to talk to but i started thinking to myself you know i have a lot to say about these topics too so you know why not get myself involved in this as well and when uh you know you guys always were putting up the open invitation to come and do it i i jumped at the chance i mean you you guys made it so inviting to come on to do it that I wanted to take a chance in doing it. And, and I want to thank you guys, especially, you know, you, Julian and Ken as well for making it such an enjoyable time to do it. And also to Lonnie as well, because it seems like me, us four seem to be the ones that do the majority of it. And I, and I kind of like that. I mean, we have the, we have a good connection and a good, uh, you know, rapport with each other and it always seems to be really really great episodes when we do it together don't get me wrong i love doing it with the other guys too with daniel and with alan and all those guys too i it's really fantastic to doing with it with everybody even with alex and everybody it's it's just it just seems like when us four get together there's always a little bit of humor and stuff like that i get interjected a bit more than some of the other episodes so it's 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 kind of it's kind of fun and also i gotta thank you guys for doing this because it made me you know get the courage up to get myself involved in another podcast that I was really, you know, hoping to get myself involved with and with a band that I really love as well, which is Yes, and I'm involved with the Yes Music podcast, and I've been promoted to co-host with him now, so I'm really happy to be doing that, so, and, you know, I owe it to you guys, so thank you very much for, you know, helping me get my, uh, you know, knowledge of how to do these sort of podcasts, and it's really, really helped, so thanks a million. Well, I, I got to commend you for doing a, a yes podcast because those are topographical oceans that I could not sail to save my life. Oh my God! So you raised a couple of names that I'd forgotten to mention earlier. Um, or actually, I hadn't gotten around to mentioning Daniel who's going to be on the show today. So Daniel, thank you. You were a part of the first show, so I'm particularly bummed out that you're you're not here today. But there you go. We also had Joel on for a few episodes. Joel would have loved to have had you on more episodes, but it just seems our schedules never quite worked out together. But who knows? Maybe in the future we can get back. Um, Joe. Joe, Wendy O. Williams, what an episode that was. That actually stands out <laughs> as one of my favorite episodes, and I'll ask you both about that in a few moments. But that was an episode I had no interest in doing. That was a topic that I was actually very reticent to do. Joe came out of the blue, um, you know, with his people's elbow, and suggested it. And I went with it, and that actually turned out to be a far more enjoyable episode than I ever thought it would be. So that was one where I got quite a bit of personal gratification. No, my hands are still up here, um, you know, discussing. So, you know, that that was a really cool one. And one final person, I believe, Jay, who kind of disappeared from the show. You know, he was in for a lot of the earlier, really? episode, earlier episodes, and then life kind of, uh, you know, dealt him cards that he needed to play first so you know as is the case for all of his life real life comes first and these podcasts are very much uh secondary <laughs> and uh entertainment ken you came in around the same time as mark i believe um you know we've done quite a few episodes i think 20 odd episodes and if my if my uh uh kind of my information sheet's correct you came in on episode 20 you know what led you to want to get involved in the faq podcast because i don't remember <laughs> um, I think I just wanted to talk talk Kiss with uh, you know other people, uh, meet other Kiss fans, and the the other reason is I'd be listening to these other Kiss podcasts um, like Podcast or uh, whatever was out there at the time, and uh, and I was like, well, you know, every time I listen to it, I'm thinking, oh yeah, I have some inter, you know, I have some <laughs> background here uh or thoughts about you know this subject or that subject and i thought man it'd be you know fun to you know talk about kiss and and all the different things uh and you know I'm, i've always followed them from you know since 77 i've never you know jumped off um the wagon and i thought well this might be an opportunity so i I think you had an open invitation kind of thing out there or said oh, you posted something on the board and I said, oh, you know what, I'll, I'll go ahead and try it, you know. So <clears throat> the first one was 
a little nervous, you know, because it's just something new. And but uh, yeah, it's it's gotten to be real fun, and uh, meeting you guys and and the other the other guys that we've met and and just talking kids. I mean, you can't just <laughs> found out that there's so much to talk about and uh, things we probably a lot of things we haven't covered. We think we've covered, but we really haven't. And a lot of people, you know, I don't pretend to know everything about kids. I learn a lot. From mm. from yeah. talking to you, you, know, you, you have a plethora of knowledge, Julian and and Mark, and especially with his his music uh, background. Um, so we all have this little thing, and it and it kind of pulls together, and it it seems to work, and uh, uh, it's it's really f- real fun. Yeah, that's something that I really I really appreciate about guests or people like Mark and Tim, uh, who both speak the language of music. Because I can't speak that language in the same terms that they can. I'm, you know, it, it, it it's like describing colors to a visually impaired person for me. But Mark Mark can get into kind of the details and with his experience of production, especially, I, I find that adds a lot to the discussions when it comes up. And I, I think that really brings something to our listeners. So. You know, actually, it was episode 16 that you came in on. But, uh, you know, let's just talk about a, a few of our favorite memories of the first 100. And, you know, I've, I've already mentioned one, so I'm just going to get my two out of the, my other two out of the way quickly. Um, I'd say one of my favorite episodes was uh, James Campion um, when we had him on for Destroyer and the one I the interview I did with him solo. We haven't had a lot of guests and that's something that, you know, I, I kind of facilitate between, yes, I want to get guests. No, I don't want to get guests. I want to be more just, you know, the fan discussion. Um, you know, talking to James when he had his uh, his Destroyer book come out, because we've done such a similar line of work. I mean, it was just such a fun, fun conversation and so passionate. He's such a passionate person about the topic and so knowledgeable. I just had a great time uh, with that. So that's one of my, my favorite episodes. The other favorite incident for me is Daniel. Daniel, in the middle of an episode, actually has happened in a couple of episodes, yeah. um, his burglar alarm started going off so he went to deal with the burglar alarm and ended up locking himself out of his office uh, or, or wherever it was he was recording so he had to run like two kilometers home to get yeah. keys and came back uh to get back in and then he came puffing up to the camera and sat down and just we continued and you know then a couple of uh, moments later you know we had the full story and that to me is just hilarious i would have been sodic i'm going to the pub i'm locked out camera still running you know can't do anything but that's the level of commitment and the committability i guess of um someone that in the middle of a show you got alarms going off you're locked out and you run home and get keys so those those are you know the wendy o williams thing you know there have been a lot of positive moments throughout the the first hundred and i'm looking forward to more you know whether we keep up the frequency of a week in week out who knows i i don't want to think about what the future holds because podcasting should be a little bit you know varied and there's so many podcasts now to listen to uh you know, so much quality podcast remains the gold standard for me it is my favorite you know podcast um pot of thunder mm-hmm. you know they're they're, they're just I, I i can't even name you all so if you guys listen to some other ones name them as well because i don't want to leave anyone else obviously three sides is the big boy on the block um i don't get a lot of time to listen to other podcasts now because i find in doing our own that that kind of takes my energy i listened to podcasts the other day and that was uh, i wanted to hear the other half of the creatures that i wasn't a part of and that was great mm-hmm. so ken you know what are some of your favorite memories from uh your time with the show so far well like you said the the daniel one was pretty funny uh <laughs> i just remember him coming back and plopping in his chair and his hair was all messed up and everything he's just like <laughs> all sweaty and tired i think from running like you said two miles but uh um you know they're all they're all fun. I mean, like you mentioned Wendy Williams. I didn't know how that one was gonna gonna go either. Um, though I was a big fan of that album. Um, I had it when it came out, and and uh, it was com- kind of like like I said. I think at the time when we, we reviewed it, uh, I said it's like a, it's a Kiss album, but with you know uh, Wendy Williams singing lead. Really, I mean, it's it's like 
pretty much like a Kiss album. So uh, from that standpoint, uh, that was you know a cool thing to uh, another subject uh, where we go off and maybe do uh, spinoffs of where branch where Kiss branches off into something else or it's related to something else. You know where we where we go to. Uh, some other uh, artists, you know, whether it's, you know, Vinnie Vincent, you know, Invasion, we did that not that long ago and, and, and stuff like that. I do like to hear the, do those, you know, the top threes, bottom threes. And the, when we do the, you know, the favorite covers of, of albums and things <laughs> and, and, and see, uh, see Mark's drawings of, you know, yep. uh, um, I don't know, it was a hot in the shade or one of them like yeah. that. And, and the ideas we came up with, were actually pretty impressive on some of the alternate uh, covers of the. Of course, we're not going to change the classic covers, uh, like Destroyer or anything like that. But um, the other ones that you know, like Animalize, like Hot in the Shade, and the <laughs> the ones that are <laughs> that you know they could have done a little better job on it. So those things, and then I mean, it gives us a chance to the rant. You know, we rant on Kiss. We we sometimes bag on them here, but. You know, we still love them. You know, it's just, it's like your 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 brother or your sister. You know, they may get on your nerves sometime or they do something, but you still love them, right? And uh, so, it's 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 like that. And I enjoy just talking about in any of those subjects. And I, I let you know learning what I've been learning uh, about uh, certain aspects of kids and their history. Hey, you know if. If I didn't have you guys, and when I say you guys, I mean everyone who's been on the podcast and other podcasts with me, I'd have no one to talk to Kiss about because you know there's there's no one in this in this <laughs> in this home that wants to have a conversation with me about any of my music. So you know, <laughs> thank you all, exactly. Mark. What about you? What are some of your your standout uh, episodes or memories of being on the show so far? Um, I have quite a few actually. I mean. Like you, I liked. I really enjoyed enjoyed the uh, James Campion one. That was really good with the Destroyer there. Um, I also enjoyed uh, the one that you did with Alan about the Kiss in Japan stuff there. I thought that was yeah. really oh that was fun. well done. Mm. I thought that was really good. I, I really enjoyed it because it's a it's a part of Kiss that we not that we don't talk about it enough, but it's just that we don't have as much info about it as maybe Alan does, right? Yep. From being in that area, so he he opens up a whole new you know chapter of the book for us to look at right when he starts talking about that area of the world right which i really enjoyed because you know just like when i bought his book it was like wow so many things i never knew about kiss in japan right so that was a fantastic one um you know obviously the daniel one cracks me up every time i saw that one too with the with the alarm i mean who who wouldn't have cracked up on that you know that was so funny when that happened um for me, I have a soft spot in my heart for my first one, which was the uh, Dress to Kill anniversary one. I think was the first one I came in on, um, if I'm not mistaken. I think that was the one I came in on. But uh, that one, for some reason, uh, you know, sits in my heart nicely because it was the first one. And like Ken, I was a little nervous coming in to do it, but I think it went well. And, you know, it really, op I really opened up from there, as you could tell, because, you know, episodes later I started, you know, going with those rants that Ken talks about there, how I go off on Bob Ezrin a lot and stuff like that, and how Destroyer sucks and stuff like that, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's it's all in fun, too. But, I mean, you know, listen, if everybody had the same opinions about everything, it would be pretty boring, right? So that's what makes it fun and exciting to be on these sorts of shows, right? Um, as far as other shows, I really enjoyed when we talked about your book, Julian, the, uh, the mm -hmm. Gene Ace Peter and Paul one. That's one of my favorite books still of all time. I still have it regularly out in front of me, and at least once a week I peek through a chapter and read through it, just like I do with the Odyssey book. And I just recently now got your new one there, the uh, 73 to 83 book, which I'm leafing through and I really enjoy a lot. So, you know, you can't go wrong with a Julian Gill book. If you don't have one, you should go definitely out and buy one, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, as far as the other episodes, I mean, there's so many. I really enjoyed when we did those historical locations that was a fun episode where we talked about different locations around the world that kiss were involved in like where casablanca records were and stuff like that and just you know little things that were off the normal path 
of discussion. You know, that was something that was a little bit different, and I enjoyed talking about stuff like that. So there's so many things. I mean, it, it can go on forever. And another one I have to just put in really quickly is I really did enjoy doing the Christmas one and the New Year's Eve one. I thought those were fun because I'm a big holiday person. I love Christmas and stuff like that. So even though we didn't do it exactly on Christmas, the, I still had that kind of vibe when we were talking about you know, the, the kind of Christmas ornaments and stuff like that that Kiss put out and stuff like that. It was fun to do something like that. It was a little different again. It wasn't so serious. It was a little bit more fun and lighthearted. So I really enjoyed that one as well. Well, that's nice. Those are some great memories. And thank you for pimping my book, uh, Kiss. On tour, 73 to 83. First volume, obviously I've had On Tour out for years, and that's the 98 to 2014 book. I had always continued going back, and what what you get in this book is, is not Kiss Alive Forever. It does not try and be Kiss Alive Forever. Their work is, again, I, I'm going to use the phrase gold standard uh, for tour history. What mine is is similar, and there's a lot of information that surfaced since that book came out. There's a lot of set lists. There's a lot of details that have been, uh, shall we say, corrected for want of a different term, as people will probably find in mine and anyone else who does one. You're, it's not static. It's always evolving. You're always learning new things. I've continued to dig into newspapers and spend hundreds of hours in the library going through microfilm, finding reviews for shows to get the contemporary um, you know, voice about how people were reacting to Kiss in the press. So we, what I've done is compiled a ton of the best parts of interviews, um, the best parts of, you know, press reviews of concerts. And yeah, Mr. Patrick McDonald, the legendary Seattle reviewer, is quoted in there, um, you know, <laughs> for, with his fond memories of, you know, the shows in Seattle or, or wherever it was. So, you know, that that's all it is. Um, is it going to change the world? No. It's uh, just been a passion, though, to keep, you know, going back and finding, you know, the lost tour dates because – there are lost tour dates. There are always things. There are dates that, you know, are listed somewhere as occurring that don't, that got canceled at the last minute or got moved to the next day, you know, because of snow or some other events. And just continuing to track down all of that kind of information, um, you know, it, it's come a long way from the original KISS FAQ tour listing. You know, once you get away from a list that someone else created and go back and start digging and using itineraries, obviously use many of the same sources as uh, Kurt and Jeff's book, but, um, you know, validating it. It's it, it's a, a passion. It remains a passion, always will be. It's something that, ooh, there's a new newspaper available. You know, check through that for KISS references. So, something I love doing. Um so let's get into uh, today's topic, which you're going to find out what it is in a second because, you know, I'm, I'm going to rip open another one of our, our topic roulettes. <laughs> you know, that that's one way to keep from preparing for these shows is, uh, <laughs> and hopefully I won't tear it in half. So, all right. Well, it looks like it's a very short one because, oh, ah, okay. <laughs> Shit. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, th this is almost somewhat topical with all the drama that's been going on lately with uh, Mr. Frelly. And mm. I do want to give a shout out to Eddie Trunk, actually. Uh, he did an interview with Ace the other night on his uh, Sirius XM satellite, and that was posted on YouTube the other day. And his first thing straight out of the bat was mentioning Tim and my Odyssey book as a prelude to a question to Ace about the Elder. So thank you very much, Eddie, for mentioning the book. It seems that you enjoyed it, which is what our aim was, but it was certainly nice to uh, have you uh, mention it on air. So today's topic is, um, would it make sense for Ace to want to be back in the band or to be back in the band, and why is Peter always ignored? And with Kiss just announcing its uh, twenty, some of its 2017 run of dates, everyone will notice that Ace Frehley is not mentioned as being reunited with the band for that run. <laughs> and, if, and if you thought he was going to be, well, I got a bridge to sell you to. So, you know, at, at this point, Mark, does it make any sense for Ace to want back into the band or for the band to want Ace back in? and let let it let loose you know what this is something that i just don't understand why people keep bringing up l let's look at it from a positive angle for for once i'm going to start from a positive angle on this okay 
it seems like Ace and Paul have gotten themselves back on friendly terms. You know, he appeared on the video with Ace there for, for Fire and Ice there. And, uh, you know, it went well. And everybody was all talking after that. Oh, maybe they're going to get back together now and stuff. You know what? Let's just be happy that they're back on good terms. They're talking again. They're friendly with each other. Maybe they're maybe maybe now he's going to be friendly with everybody now. So you know what? <clears throat> Instead of hearing all these little jabs and stuff that they used to do, let's be happy that maybe that's going to be gone now. They're going to only say nice things to each other. They're going to Twitter, you know, Merry Christmas or whatever to each other now, and just keep it in a happy spot. Why would he dare risk? Mending that bridge now and going back there and just stirring up a whole pile of crap because you know that's what's going to happen. As soon as he gets back into it, he's going to fall back into his old ways again. There's going to be trouble. He's going to be late or whatever. Or he's going to set up that ridiculous projector where there's a picture of Elvis that morphs into him and stuff like that. You know, all these crazy things that he used to do on tour. I mean, why, why even bother, you know, getting yourself back into that hornet's nest? I think... It makes more sense for Kiss to continue the way they are now because they're happy. They're going through their, their shows. They want to do more shows. I mean, think about it. These guys are getting up there now. They have every reason to stop playing now. They've done everything. They've, they've done all they could do and would probably want to do. So they're just doing it now strictly because they love it now. So I can't imagine Ace being in the band would actually make them continue loving to do it. You know, that's just my opinion. You guys may think that I'm wrong about that, but I just think that bringing Ace back in will be just problems. I mean, we have we have lots of documented evidence to prove that, that it's just been nothing but trouble and horseshit every time he's been in the band and with Peter as well. I'm sure we'll get to that after. But, you know, it's I just think it doesn't doesn't make any sense. That's my piece. One of the nice things about the Eddie Trunk interview with Ace the other night was the nice things that Ace had to say um, about working with Paul Stanley on the Fire and Water video. And one of the things that he said was, you know, Paul came down, did his thing, you know, and then was willing to hang around. So Paul wasn't just flying in doing the bare minimum. You know, he was willing and, you know, happy to make it as successful for Ace as he possibly could. So I thought that was a really nice sounding, you know, description of how that day went because... You know, he he was very appreciative of Paul Stanley and also very respectful. He's letting everyone know by telling that story that Paul was cool. Paul was, you know, supportive. Paul was, you know, caring, you know, which, you know, people who hear some of the back and forth sometimes think that, okay, it, it's just, you know, Paul doing something for Paul. It isn't Paul doing something for Ace, you know, the, the people who are always a kind of paranoid keyboard warriors. So I think it was very nice that Ace made it very clear that Paul was doing this, but not just doing it for his own benefit. He he cared about what Ace was going to get out of it. The other thing that um, they mentioned on the interview was that Ace is celebrating 10 years of sobriety. And for mm-hmm. me, that's a, that's a big deal. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't have, you know, anything to worry about with sobriety, I hope. But for someone who has battled all his life with those demons, to get to 10 years on what remains a day-to-day battle for him and anyone who's recovering, you know, I've, I've heard from so many people who have reached that stage where they have to step away from it forever or else, you know, that that's such a wonderful accomplishment for him. Just think, 10 years. How many people thought that Ace Frehley would be alive at this stage, you know, and putting out albums? <laughs> I mean, come on, he's how many albums has he put out in the last few years? I mean, going, it, it, it's amazing. I, I certainly did yeah. not. And for me, that is the thing that I always say. I don't want Ace to do anything in his life that's going to put his sobriety at jeopardy because that's a big enough challenge for him to approach. And being back in KISS is probably the fastest way to hit the booze possible for him because Gene and Paul and whomever, the work environment, I think, is such. And I'm not throwing anything at Gene and Paul. for I'm not saying they cause alcoholism. Alcoholism simply is, you know, and... It's obvious that Ace in that environment needs alcohol to deal with it. Ken, what's your thoughts on the, you know, Ace wanting back into the band? Well, <clears throat> well, while I would like Ace to be back, um, 
it's it's, it's just not probably a healthy thing for him. Um, you know, I guess it seems like when he came back, uh, he just kind of went into a same old routine kind of thing. And, and I don't know how much he can really be on the road. They're a little bit more busy uh, in Kiss on the road versus Ace. Though Ace has been, you know, touring pretty pretty good lately. Um, but I think he gets, you know, uh, more breaks in between and and has more time. So, yeah, I'd like to see Ace back just because, you know, he's the original and he's a you know, great guitarist. Uh, came with all those great solos in the past. But... Uh, I, uh, I don't think it's right. I think it only would be right for uh, a final couple shows or something at the end when Kiss decides to retire. Uh, if they ever decide to retire. I, at this point, I, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of beginning to wonder that they're, they're going to you know lose one on stage, you know. They're going to die, die playing live or something. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that would be the only way to, to have him back. Um now, on the other hand, uh, I know they're gonna they're talking about the new album, recording a new album, and maybe he can return a favor on one song, and and play a solo or something like that. I think that would be really cool. I think it would. Uh, a lot of Kiss fans would definitely, you know, buy that music or that album uh -huh. just just for that reason alone. Um, just to get that, at least you know, you got three out of four of the original Kiss on a, on a song would be pretty, pretty cool. So I, I think Tommy wouldn't have a problem with that because Tommy's such a you know cool guy and uh, you know and the current band is you know doing fine. Like like Mark said, it's just moving along and you know they're <laughs> they're doing well. They seem to be doing pretty well and they're and they're happy. Like Mark said also. So yeah, Ace maybe. Uh, I, come back on the album, play a lead, and then he can still continue his solo career and make more, you know, hopefully more solo albums. And that is the voice of reason. Ken, I think you hit the <laughs> nail nail on the head that just think, if Kiss is going to record something next year, why not reciprocate and have Ace come in and do mm -hmm. something? Think of what Ace did with Origins, Volume 1. He had, was it Slash on Emerald? The dueling guitars. Mm-hmm. Okay, can he do a solo just himself on a guest as a soloist on a Kiss song? Hell yeah. But what would be even more tasty? Have Tommy and him dueling. I mean, that, that'd be cool. The, it, it'd be like a Jedi fight with guitars. I mean, the, <laughs> the master and Padawan, you know, Tommy, you know, great guitarist. It plays the licks. He knows his instrument. He's at one with his instrument. Mm -hmm. But then you have kind of the grizzled old Luke of The Force Awakens, you know. <laughs> Getting out his guitar, you know, I just think mm -hmm. it, it, it would just be too fun, maybe too perfect, and just uh, too too out there for Kiss to ever do it. Because then you get yeah. into the question of why can't Kiss um, kind of make peace with Peter? You know, they they can, oh, yeah. they they continue to kind of. I, I I think it's just part of Gene's DNA that he's unable to really understand addiction. That he's always got to throw out the uh, you know the alcoholics and druggies and you know mm. Peter has worked hard his uh, you know his life you know fighting cancer mm -hmm. and is living you know what I assume is a very healthy lifestyle to maintain that as he approaches you know what seventy one this year. So how about giving him the same sort of respect that has been given to Ace, regardless of any backstory? How about these guys start being bigger than the characters that they became in makeup? You know, get off the comic book page and start being human again. And I, I just go through life and think it's easier to get through life and not leave these kind of uh, chasms between people. You know, why not say something nice about Peter why not try and involve him, you know, not bring him up on stage necessarily if he doesn't want to, because what does Peter want at this stage? You know, he's got an album that's basically in the can that's going nowhere yet that we know, and mm -hmm. hope, hopefully he'll give us one last new piece of work to, you know, kind of enjoy. 
but he may not. So I'd like to see a similar sort of outreach to Peter that they've done with Ace. And maybe there is stuff interpersonal. We, we don't know what the relationships are. Mark, yeah. what's your thought on Peter? Well, I think with Peter, it's uh, there's some similarities and some very much unsimilarities to Ace. For example, I think right now, and I've heard this from a few people and from different podcasts, a lot of people are saying that Peter right now seems to be in the most happiest moods that they've ever seen him in. Like, I mean, you got to understand, like you mentioned, this man battled cancer, survived, and has lived to talk about it, and he's involved in a lot of these cancer foundations. And, you know, when you go through something like that and come out on the other side victorious, you can't help but smile, you know, because a lot of other people can't say that, right? So I think that has something to do with his happiness and with his change of attitude toward life, maybe. And, you know, I think right now he's just happy being with his with his wife, Gigi, there and living a nice, quiet life, comfortable, obviously, because, you know, he did do some stuff that made him able to retire comfortably. And I think the main reason why he doesn't get the same respect as Ace, and again, I could be wrong, but I think this boils back to history in the sense that not so much the drugs and that, I think that Paul and Gene respect Ace more as a musician than they respect Peter because Ace came out with a lot of material that, you know, they kind of looked back at and probably respected, like his 78 solo record. They loved it and they had nothing good to say about Peter's. And then later on, he came out with a bunch of records for these Comet. He came out with Anomaly was, was pretty decent. Space Invader was pretty good, you know, and even this uh, Origins record. You know, he's come up with some pretty good stuff. I mean, you know, when you go back and look through Peter's back catalog, what do we got? Out of control? Blech. You know? Oh, that's a, me, that's totally unfair. <laughs> let, let me rock you, you know? Which was, you which have, was yeah. basically shit canned by Casablanca by only ha- ha- not yeah. having it being released in the U.S. I don't think that yeah. helped Peter at all. Okay, but, you know... And then you got a all for one. Let's not forget that, right? No, you know? let's let's forget that one. <laughs> but but you see what but you see what I mean when I'm, when you when you line up Ace's material and then Peter's and put it side by side, it's easy to maybe see why mm-hmm. they give a little bit more respect to Ace, and maybe why they would maybe humor bringing him back in as far as involvement more than they would Peter, you know. But don't get me wrong, I, I like the Cat Man. He's he has a kind of a interesting personality when he's a happy guy he seems like the guy that you'd want to hang out with at a party but when he's in a bitchy mood he's probably the guy you don't want to bring over to you know for christmas dinner you know you don't want him to shoot your christmas tree or something right so (laughs) it's i just i just think that really at this point again i think peter's happy with what he's doing I think that if they'd ever asked him, listen, we're doing one last hurrah, could you come in and for the encore and play with us? I think he would he would think about it and do it. Sure. And maybe if they're doing a KISS record now, if they asked him, hey, you want to come and do some backing vocals with us? I think he might consider doing it, right? I don't think he would certainly drum on anything now, but I think he would maybe do some singing. He still has a great voice, right? Why not, right? But I think that right now, we got to look at the facts, people. The guy's 71 years old. He's happy now. He's had a long career where he's done a lot of things, both good and bad. You know, let's let him enjoy his time now, you know, and let's wish him only the best. And there you go. You know? Yeah, I'm totally disagreeing with you. Let him have his time because the Rolling Stones just dropped a new album today. And when we're we're talking about elderly rockers, geriatrics, I'm sorry, there's no way to get around it. You've all got your bus passes, um, you know, (laughs) when you reach that age. But Keith Richards, Mick Jagger, Charlie Watts, you know, Roy Wood. uh, No, not Roy. Ron Wood. Sorry. Ron Ron Wood, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, it's a kiss, uh, kiss connection there. So, you know, yeah. are still putting out, yeah. you know, vibrant music. Um, you know, yeah, their new album's just covers, but I mean, it's all blue standards. So, why the hell is Peter Chris not doing something? I, you know, I, I love Peter, and I just want to hear more from him because his book just left me empty uh you know it really didn't give me the insight into him that i that i was looking for maybe he didn't want to give it you know simple as that so i I don't really have a problem from that perspective i want to you know i'd love to see like him up on a youtube channel 
you know, spinning a jazz record or some music that inspired him in his youth and telling mm -hmm. a freaking story. I mean, come on, how difficult is it to get a camera and stick him in, you know, a nicely lit place and say, hey, Peter, let's play some music, man, you know? talk about it you know stories that's the sort of stuff i love if he doesn't want to make music that's fine he's he doesn't need to he's got a whole fucking catalog of music that he's already made so you know i i, I reacted to mark saying anything bad about out of control because i dig that album i dig let <laughs> let me rock you after yeah. after that it's kind of downhill i like this stuff that he did with stan in 85 there's some of those demos the harder ones um from the alliance but you know chris the stuff of Phil Narrow's good, um, but when you get to the album, it's a, a little bit patchy other than Blue Moon. So, you know, I, I think he's got music, and it, it, it's not necessarily just going to be his music. I would love to see him telling stories. and It's a great you, idea. You know, you know, run through some Sinatra, run through some stuff. Who knows? I, and that's the whole thing. You know, we hear that his his background is this, but we've never really heard what are those albums or songs you know he, he gave us a little bit on one for all with what a difference a day makes you get a story there mm -hmm. you know of listening to that i want to hear more because i want to explore this is stuff my my jazz knowledge is non-existent i mean my father cut a jazz record uh, at university so i've got that stuff mm -hmm. that they used to play and i don't know what peter's outlook was because all this that stuff from my dad's side is all trad jazz you know, where is Peter's music, the blues, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the stories from the street? I want to hear that. And I wanted to read that in his book. So maybe like Ace, he'll do a second biography, autobiography. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting, though, that you bring that up because that's probably one of the things that he could easily do is to make a Peter Chris podcast. And I would definitely check it out because, like you said, he, did, he didn't really talk much about those things. I mean, he always talked about Gene Krupa being a huge influence yeah. on him drumming-wise and, mm -hmm. you know, we, and we saw the reaction that he had when Gene gave him those box sets during the reunion tour with the Frank Sinatra. He started singing those songs in the dressing room there. I mean, they obviously have a place in his heart. So wouldn't it be great to hear him pull out one of those CDs, put it on, and talk about well, how it affected him and why it affected him, or how did Gene Krupa's playing affect him as a drummer? I mean, these would be all things I'm sure lots of KISS fans would love to hear, and drummers would love to hear as well. So I I think it's a great idea. Ah, oh, shit. Can you imagine, you know, <laughs> that he's playing a bit of a song and saying, okay, you hear that little piece there? Well, that's the thing I tried to work on into Kiss song, such and mm -hmm. such. <laughs> there you oh, go. Yeah. I mean, Ken, would you yeah. would you pay to listen to that or to, would you watch that if you had the Peter Chris podcast? Yeah, I would. It would be very interesting, actually, to, to see how he uh, incorporated some riffs that he's learned from jazz into, into Kiss and is like, uh, because... You know, Kiss with the other drummers, you know, you don't have that jazz feel or his, his feel. It's, it's totally different. And maybe that's why the music uh, after he left changed to more of the, the hard rock type uh, drumming style instead. Uh, yeah, it's it's a different kind of thing with him doing it. Um, I, I look forward to, I, I don't know what he's going to talk about, but when we go down to the LA Kiss Expo, and hopefully hear some good stories or if there's some good questions that somebody maybe uh, ask him about that type of uh, subject regarding swing. Um, <clears throat> as far as uh, Peter Chris coming back to kiss or something like that, I don't, I don't see it. It's going to be like a, uh, like the other thing where it's going to be when only when they're, you know, hanging up, uh, you know, the guitars and drumsticks and all that stuff when they're ready to finish. Um, though, though, I mean, it would be nice. Maybe I had this other idea just when I was thinking about the, you know, Ace coming back reciprocating. Well, Kiss is, you know, working on their album. And I said, you know, maybe he can do that. Well, what if they got all four together and, and just had a one recording for a record store day release, a record store day release? That would be cool. Uh, you know, that I'd, I'd be all over that if they just recorded take all four of them together, one song, put it out on Record Store Day, and wait, that'd be that'd be totally cool. And they could still, you know, Kiss, the current version of Kiss can still record their album and do their thing. Uh, but they can do that all while they're in the studio, bring them in for one of the, you know, sessions and, and have some fun. So, do like what, like a like a remake of Mainline or something? Or <clears throat> no, I wouldn't do a remake. I do a brand new song. A new song, cool. I do a brand new song or a brand new it old could, song. It, 
a brand new yeah exactly a brand new old song from a demo that they you know didn't finish you know there's some good ones really good songs that they that never made it to record uh they could do that and i it would be very cool to see how they sound and something like that so I, i'd like to see that that might be a really honest way of actually approaching it. I mean, if you dig up one of these old demos, look at Paul on Kiss Crew 6. He digs out mm-hmm. this old so long, you know, and gives the guys who, uh, you know, were at that special event the story of the song, then plays it. You know, why not dig up one of those? Because there's a lot of stuff. There, I mean, there there are reels and reels and reels of ideas and, and say, okay, Ace, Peter, we're going to do this. You know, and if, if Peter and Ace buy off on it, you know, take that song, finish it let them have input on it you know and so it doesn't sound necessarily just like the demo let it be vibrant let it evolve you know let it be organic and become a a representation of those guys don't try and be 1975 or 76 especially 76 or mark don't be 76 or mark you know he he won't yeah yeah mark (laughs) uh but you know let ace and peter have room to breathe and step back a little bit gina paul and remember you know what you're trying to accomplish it's a record store day would just make far too much sense i think it'd be more likely to end up as a 12 inch single on the kiss crew seven um than record store day because Mm, (laughs) but either way would be very cool without a doubt but i I think getting back into the the new album i think mark you mentioned that having him guess his vocals on vocals or backing vocals on the kiss album would be fantastic peter's got a great voice and he brings a lot and i think take a couple of those paul stanley songs that he writes in that vein and you know if peter were willing get him on there i mean a kiss album is just not going to they, they got to get over this hump of accepting that the record industry is not what it was look at you know bon jovi's album that just came out at what it debuted at number one or number two i can't remember and then dropped to 43 the biggest ever drop and then down to 127 or something so you know, you're not doing it for the charts anymore. You're not doing it for the platinum or gold awards because they don't exist anymore. So why not do it for the fans? Why not do it for yourselves artistically, but also think yeah. about your customers and how you could expand that customer base? Think of how many people didn't buy Sonic Boom, didn't buy Monster because it's the current lineup. Now throw Ace Frehley on a guest spot on one of those tracks and Peter Chris on guest backing vocals or guest lead vocals on a track and think of the 10 more people who will buy the album. You know, who knows how many more? (coughs) I'm I'm not going to say it's going to change the public perception, but think of what you can do with that. You can say, you know, featuring original guitar. You, You get all sorts of possibilities for a very little bit of goodwill. It's goodwill towards Ace and Peter. It's goodwill towards the Kiss Army. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah, makes sense to yeah. me. And I mean, Absolutely. you know, what the one thing that I also think is important to mention is that while these guys can still do this, would be the time to do it, right? Because I mean, like I said, time is going forward, and every time I talk about this topic with whether it's you guys or with the other people on boards and what other message boards that I'm on too, I can't help but get a little melancholy about ta- about talking about this because my favorite band, Rush who have now released that new DVD that came out that time stands still, it's very obvious there that there is never going to be a tour for these guys ever again. And it's mentioned quite clearly why. I mean, you know, Neil Peart mentioned on there that he's so, like, bruised up and injured from the years of touring that he just can't do it. And, I mean, he brought up an interesting point, and I was very surprised that they left this in the final edit, was when he said, okay, sure, I could go out and play now, but... It's different playing. Uh, I could play, go out and play a tour of Charlie Watt drumming, but I can't go out and do a tour of oh. Neil Peart drumming. You know what I right. mean? Which is an interesting it's thing different. that he brought up because it is a different thing. You know, you see Charlie; he's like, look, it looks like he's half asleep when he's drumming. <laughs> Where Neil Peart is, you know, he's going full out, and these drums are still moving, like shaking when he's hitting these things. Mm-hmm. So, let, let's mm-hmm. be happy that Ace and Peter and these guys are still able to contribute in some way or be willing to do it so let's get them you know maybe get them involved and like you said it's all about you know putting the past aside you know and just moving forward as human beings and just giving giving each other a bit of a break and slack and just you know let's just get on with things you know 
Yeah, I think the thing with Rush was, uh, you know, very classily handled. I mean, everyone knew that it, Neil was basically had his arm twisted to do that last run. Um, but the guys did stick to their word and say that unless we all agreed, we're not going to do it anymore. Yeah. And Neil mm-hmm. has obviously put his foot down while he still can. Because, I mean, look at what the man's been through. So, you know, I, I totally get that from that perspective. But I also think Getty and Alex have said, you know, we're not going to go out with another drummer as well, which yeah, I, yeah. I find I find that to be more important to speak of the musical integrity of Rush. You know, obviously they can't go back and get, you know, Rutsy. Rutsy? Because he's, <laughs> he's deceased, you know. Yeah. So... You know, I I think if they ever do go out, they're going to call themselves something different. And, you know, I, I, I hope there's more music, at least yeah. from those there two. There will be. You know, but not well, not using the Rush moniker in any sense. I don't want to see the the man in the pentagram, whatever the hell that's called. The naked guy? Yeah. But, but just to let you know real quickly, because I'm kind of plugged into the rush community oh, oh, yeah. in some yeah. ways more than others because i have you no know, people that work with people who work with the people within it so there is still a running rumor i'll oh, just leave it at that a rumor that there will be a, a, a rush album done they have never put that aside that there will be another rush record with neil for sure mm-hmm. that he never had any issue with because recording is different you can go in for three hours okay i can't play anymore dudes okay no problem we'll pick it up tomorrow that's a lot different than touring, right? Mm-hmm. And what they've always said as well, which I've heard through managerial circles, is that Neil has said if you give him a bit of time, you know, which could be what, a year, and they get offered the right situation, i.e., like three nights at Radio City Music Hall to commemorate uh-huh. something, he would maybe do it, but he's never going to do a long term like tour again Mm -hmm. so an album excuse me an album yes that's gonna happen i I can i can literally guarantee that will happen but the live performances maybe but it's got to be something special for that to happen from now you know but Mm -hmm. just there but there we go we can draw that parallel now to kiss will those guys come back ace and peter to play anything with gene and paul it would have to be damn special. It would have to be the last show. It would have to be the last two shows on Madison Square Garden or something like that mm-hmm. for them to come back and to do that. It's the only way. But I think it's more likely that they could appear on a recording and put in something to really make the fans excited. I think that's more possible. It's really starting to happen, though. I mean, look at Aerosmith. They're going out next year, and they've called their tour the Aero Viderci, you know. <laughs> which you know k- kind of speaks you know to them starting to pack in at least the touring side so that uh steven tyler can get on his horse and ride off into the sunset yeehaw sorry steven you're a rock and roller not a country star get over That's yourself true. um you know but AC- <laughs> a- acdc same thing you know look at how they kind of a shambolic end that they stumbled to and who knows what's going to happen next with that band I, I i mean it's it's age they're up there i mean who mark did you say that they're up there now and you know <laughs> kiss kiss is kiss kiss is a strange creature because of the makeup um you know i i'm just having an image right now of uh Ace coming back and replacing Tommy and trying to squeeze into that uh, elder era <laughs> costume and yeah, it's a little bit tight, curly. <laughs> look, look like a freaking Peroshki or a hot dog or something. I have to wear a, gir- a girdle or something. You have to wear a couple of girdles. Shit, a lot I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm no one to talk. I know that, but hell, that would be entertaining. You know, and that's where it comes from with Kiss. We're watching other bands meet their ends in in a variety of different circumstances and ways and there are some parallels and there are not parallels that it's just impossible to not keep thinking about the end when it comes to kiss and i just don't want it to be like black sabbath who were working on an album not working on an album yes we're working no we can't be bothered let's just go out and do to get it over with it yeah you know, with Tony fighting cancer, I, I don't want to see that sort of end with Kiss. 
which is why I'm so adamant that really they should be trying to heal all wounds. You know, even Vinny. It's it's leave the clean slate. Do you think Vinny has any, anything left to to play in this picture, Ken? Should we? Should we we've talked about <laughs> I, Ace and Peter. You know, Peter yeah. not being respected. What about Meredith? Well, definitely he won't be with Kiss. Uh, but uh, you know, boy, I'd love to see material from him. Uh, something it would be if he came back and did an album you know if you could post an album out there write music record it i don't know i i'd love to see where he is at music wise in his head at this you know point um I'm, he's so talented writing that i that's what i'd want to hear and he's a good singer too um so i would love to hear him singing his own songs uh, like we've heard in some demos uh, and things. Um, so, yeah, nothing to do with Kiss, unless he maybe co-writes a song or something, again, like he did in the past with maybe Gene or Paul. But I, I don't even think that's going to happen. But uh, if he could do put something out himself, I'd love to see it. And if it was decent music, or, you know, up to halfway decent, I'd buy it. I'd buy it, download, buy it, you know. So I, I'd like to see him back from wherever he is and hopefully he does well with, you know <laughs> whatever he does I think one thing that we haven't really touched on when we're talking about would it make sense for Ace to be back in the band is would it make sense for Kiss to use Ace as an opening act is that a scenario that could work you know we only have the European dates announced now for May um, and I I had Polster open a moment ago and Ace's dates are in January February um, he's got 14 so far you know, could Ace be an opening act? Do you think the fans could accept seeing Ace first and then maybe a second act and then Tommy? Or would their heads explode? Mark? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I'm going to approach this from two angles. Logical. Collision? Kiss world. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, a logical way. Yes, of course it's possible to have them come and open the show. And I mean, logically and on paper, if you look at it, what better thing to do than to have Ace freely come out, open the show, get the crowd roaring and going, and then after a, a stellar performance, you bring out Kiss, they do their thing, Encore comes out, let's bring out our good buddy Ace Freely, let's do our two Encore songs, everybody comes out holding hands and hugging and Everybody goes home happy and singing Kumbaya. Okay? <laughs> now, in the Kiss world, though, you know what's going to happen. Everyone's going to say, nah, man, that's that's disrespectful. You can't put Ace first before Kiss. He should be there playing. They should get rid of Tommy. Let, let Tommy open the show with Black and Blue or something and put Ace <laughs> back in. That You know, it's going to be something like that, some kind of comment like that. But, you know, again... I think it all stems around ego. Maybe they've talked about it. Who knows? We don't know what's happening behind closed doors. Maybe they've actually asked Ace one time, you know, hey, why don't you come and open a tour? They Maybe they're cool with it. Maybe Ace was cool with it, but maybe those guys were saying, you know, no, I don't think it's a good idea because once he's done and we come on, maybe we'll start hearing a chance for Ace during their set. You know what I mean? Mm. Who knows? You know, who knows what happens up here? You know, what people think when these situations are presented to them, you know, because in the perfect world, you would think this is perfect. It can work out perfectly. The Kiss fans will accept it. They'll be happy to see Ace there with them, you know, and that's the way you would like to think it would be. But you know how it is. There's the Kool-Aid drinkers who support Ace no matter what and think that he's, you know, God's gift to Kiss and that he deserves to be back in. And he ha and Tommy has no reason to be in the costume whatsoever. But you know, th th if people could accept how things are, it would be a great tour, I think, to have Ace opening and to do exactly what I just said. You know, let them play each of their sets. He comes back and does the encore and everything's great. But there's always something in there. The, you know, what what will Paul think? You know, what will Gene think? What will Ace think? You know, I don't want to go up there first. You know, that's you know that's not cool, Curly. I don't want to go first. You know, I'm not, I'm not lower than them. I started the band just like they... You know what I mean? It's... There's always going to be some disagreement and some friction, you know. It, I, I don't know what it would take to go to the logical end of the scale, but you know, 
I'd love to see it happen, even if it was just for a couple shows. Okay, well, here, here's the argument that I think uh, opening up for your old band rather than playing to 300 in bumfuck Texas, no offense, Texas, that's just the first one that came to mind, so don't hunt me down. Um, you know, I think he could probably make more coin doing that. And from my perspective, if it makes him get rid of some of the Kiss songs in his set and play some more Ace songs, you know, fuck yeah, because, you know, he can say, well, I'm going to do Cold Gin, I'm going to do Parasite, I'm going to do Rocket Ride, um, and Paul Stanley's going to say, you're not fucking doing Love Gun uh, or Detroit Rock City. And, you know, I think that then is like, yeah, you know, so he's got to dig into his stuff and, you know, maybe get Richie to sing a few more songs. You know, he's got Richie back with him, so use him. Ken, what's your thought on, you know, Ace opening? Why? Well, I- well, I'd like to see it happen. Uh, I mean, I'd like to see it, but I don't think it'll happen. I'd be pleasantly surprised if it happened, though. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't think he wants to open for them. Uh, but, though, like you said, you know, he could make some a lot more money with that, you know, more people uh, coming to you know, see that KISS concert. Um, and plus, you think about the more people, the more merchandise sales too, uh, you know, t-shirts and other stuff that he may make money off of uh, versus a, a small club. <laughs> it's, it's quite a, I'm sure it's quite a difference in money. Um, so from that standpoint, if he wants to get the uh, you know, bigger buck, then, but his pride may be too much to. Yeah, I, so, yeah he, he totally may be. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not opening for them. No. Yeah. Simply, I yeah. would rather play for 300 people in bumfuck whatever yeah. state, and you know because <laughs> it's my it's still my tour than and not theirs. Yeah, he may he may say you know, they should be opening for me. I'll, that's the only way I'll do it. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'd like to see it. I'd love to be at a show like that. Um, it would be very cool. I, I thoroughly enjoy that one. Boy, that would be something else. Um, but. I do. I think it's going to happen. No, it's like a point oh, zero on. zero it, zero it could one get, chance. It, I've never seen it. It could get all those haters to go to a Kiss show again. You know the one the yeah the, the point four percent who've boycotted Kiss all these years because of Tom wearing Tommy wearing Ace's makeup. You know Ace is opening for Kiss and they've got to go and they can leave afterwards, but they paid full price ticket, so it's a win. Um, <laughs> Right. So, <laughs> you know, it, it, I'm, I'm just thinking now to next year, if they do do an, at this album that they're talking about possibly mm-hmm. doing, you know, a, a touring package is critical at this point in the economy. I, I think it's going to be even more critical in the economy to come. But, um, you know, pairing up Kiss with like a Judas Priest and then having Ace open, you know, to me just makes so much sense. You know, they, they're working on it or they're going to be working on an album in the same sort of period. You know, Priest is one of those legendary right. bands that I think Kiss could pair well with again, as they did in 79. Yeah. You know, even if there were some rather unkind things said by the lads and Priest about the interaction with with Kiss at the time, you know, how high and mighty <laughs> they were. But, you know, a, a metal god and a metal god. I mean, come on, Paul Stanley and Rob Halford. Talking mm-hmm. about a couple yeah. of uh, very impressive front men who we're still very fortunate to have performing. So that, that to me would be cool. I think it's less likely to have an Ace Frehley on a Kiss bill than you're more likely to see Kiss touring with Grand Funk. So, yeah, just because, yeah. It, just because okay. it's Ace. But, you know, now we get back to the part of, you know, why is Peter always ignored? I mean, look at this conversation. There was the topic at the beginning. <laughs> You know, and why is Peter always ignored? And we've spent this uh, show basically talking about Ace. You know, I'm I'm very sorry, Peter. It's, well, I think I think because part of the reason he's ignored is he's 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 kind of stepped away from it all anyway. So it's it seems to me like he's he's not really into you know uh, making new music uh, or even for that part you know uh, probably touring. Um, because he doesn't show up at many events either, um, you know, out there. So I, I think that's the reason he's kind of like out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. And you don't think of that. Um, so that's my thinking on why, you know, we don't include Peter. Though I'd love to have Peter back. Sure. But again, that's less chance than the ace, you know, playing with the band. 
Well, you you totally hit the nail right on the head because it's out of sight, out of mind. And one of the things that I got taught very early when I was first working in a recording studio, and then I was also, you know, when I started playing shows with lots of bands that I looked up to and stuff like that and started to talk with musicians that were in, you know, much better positions, you know, as far as popularity and stuff, they always used to tell me the same thing. If you stay in the eye of the public, they'll always talk about you. So it doesn't matter. And nowadays with the internet, if Peter wanted to be talked about, he has every means available to him to do it. I mean, every single day he could put something on a Twitter or, or talk about something, you know, he, he has a new snare drum that he's developing or whatever, just something to keep people talking about him. And I think that's why we had the difference in why we're talking about Ace and why we're not talking about Peter, because with Ace, you see him in, around frequently about something. There's some interview with him or some, you know, clip that they put up or he's talking about, you know, working on material or you're talking about whatever. Like there's just something going on with Ace. And when we had our own publicist guy, he used to tell us the same thing. He goes, guys, you have to give me something every other day to put in. I don't care if it's, you know, you're washing some new brand of underwear that you love. <laughs> Just to give me something because anything in there that's talking about you guys gets people to look and to keep the, the name on their brain. And that's why, you know, he's not being talked about as much because he's not out there and people are not talking about him. We're talking about him. We're helping him in that way being thought about now so if that happened more often maybe they would start talking more about peter and maybe he would be more of a figure to think about to be involved that's what it really boils down to i wonder i wonder if peter skypes you know <laughs> no it really it really is as simple as that you know ace has some people around him like you know richie uh, has his wife who's up on Facebook and, you know, it kind of keyed in in the community and all that and gets word out about what Richie's doing. So by that respect, you also find out about what Ace is up to, you know. So, um, and then of course Ace has John, astronomy, you know, who, does does Peter have someone like that? Or is Peter just simply not interested in any of the side of thing? Can someone not put Peter in front of a, you know, does he not like technology? Is, is he not comfortable with it? Simple as that, you know. Can they not just say, okay, Peter, all you have to do is turn this button on here? And, and no, and I, I don't know what his technological yeah. level. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, yes. I'm kind of taking that really one ex extreme, you know, thing that all you have to do is do this, you know, and, and kind of help him so that he could, he could get the benefit of, he sells stuff. He has a store. Yeah. But no one's getting word about it. So of course he's going to end up less visible than Ace because mm -hmm. he do he doesn't do anything. So it, yeah. it comes back to what we've already said that I, I would love to see him. You know, just recording. A, you can record yourself on your computer very easily. You know, and and you can say you know I'm not doing this in a professional studio. And just turn the lamp on or say it's 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 my lighting effect. You know, for romantic <laughs> atmosphere. You know, I'm comfortable with. Uh, you know, and and just do it. You know, and, and give it to someone, have someone that he can trust to, to put it up, monitorize it. Go on. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It, I mean, he has, he has Gigi. I mean, she's, she's quite a, you know, ways younger than him. So maybe she's also more savvy in the ways of technology. Maybe I'm sure she could get, you know, and that nice little Apple computer with, you know, the built in camera and stuff, get him a little microphone there and he, he could do it. I mean, Mm -hmm. Let's put it this way. I guarantee you, if you kind of put the word out, you know, I need somebody to help me out with maybe doing some Skyping. You don't think that there'd be like that, like seven people who would be, oh, I'll help you out. You know, like somebody will definitely want to help out the cat man. You know, like, come on, you know, mm -hmm. just and, and then and you brought up a good point. At this point in Peter's career, does he have a John Astronomy or someone like that helping him out? It doesn't seem like it because you never hear about this person, this handler or helper. You know what I mean? So maybe he's just at that point where he just doesn't want to be that involved in it. Maybe so. Gigi is a handler. And, you maybe, know, she, yeah. And, and it does none mm. of it. None of this ultimately matters. Again, I think if he really wanted to be doing stuff, he would be. He does what he needs to when he needs to, when he wants to. And that's why I'm looking forward to L.A. so much because yeah. it, it's one of those rare occasions. I haven't seen Peter since 2003. Um, you know, in person. So, you know, would you ever bring that up if you go and see him? Would you ever bring up something like that to him? Um, 
I, I don't know if I would. It depends on the circumstances or the nature of the conversation. It, it might be not an appropriate time to, to really raise it. It might just be an appropriate time to say, Peter, thank you for what you are. You know, you're more than just the Pete Best of the Beatles. You know, you're, you're, yeah. not, you're not forgotten, the drummer, even though we don't really hear that much of you. I, I, I wouldn't try and inject anything. It would be incredibly arrogant for us to think that you know any of the thoughts we've had today maybe he hasn't thought of or someone close to him hasn't considered and we may just be off track with our hopefulness as fans you know to see more of him because we don't see him you know that we're we're trying to inject him back into the conversation we're you know, what's that word uh projecting i guess of, yeah. of what we think he should be doing so you know who knows would i say anything to peter no probably not i'd say thank you so much can you autograph this oh and this this this, and this, and this. this. oh i really like your drumming on you know fanboy yeah yeah it's simple as that you know I, i'm gonna bring a copy of out of control mark and let me rock you mark oh. for him to sign yeah i've even bought, <laughs> already bought a fresh set of green markies uh what are they markers sharpies sharpies yeah. mark markies <laughs> Markies, yeah. Sharpie. Markies, yeah. All right. So I think we're just, we've done this topic. Uh, any final thoughts? Ken? Nothing? Mark? Well, you know, I just, I sure, I, I just love to see uh, Kiss, uh, the four back, uh, do something, you know, it doesn't have to be big, minor together, uh, whether they record or, or whatever. Um, it would be nice to see. Uh, we just, and you know, hope hope that it happens one day, and uh, you know, we we'll just it doesn't it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm gonna follow the current current version of Kiss. You know, the current current it's Kiss. It's still Kiss, uh, but uh, sure, I'd I'd love to see the original Ford just have some kind of connection again together. Yep. You know, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna end it with this. I know I'm usually very hard on various members. Of this band in various situations but i'm gonna go forward and say that i'm gonna wish with all my heart that 2017 is gonna be the year that kiss has a very positive year they bring everything together they they work out all their differences and they go through a nice year without major drama and have a really good year for kiss and their fans that's what i'm hoping for for 2017 and so you should because 2017 is the 40th anniversary of Love Gun Alive 2, which mm. is the ultimate Kiss era. Because after that, is anyone going to celebrate Vegas Kiss or Unmasked Kiss? Uh, no. And we've already celebrated Creatures this year. So next year, 40th anniversary of a fantastic album. Just to before we wrap up, I've uh, been on the LA Kiss website just to check if they have any new guests. And Bruce look who's been announced as a special guest yeah. uh wow. big john hart that's very very cool, cool. i'm excited that's about cool. that adam rifkin and tim sullivan who producer the uh, producer and uh writer director of detroit rock city the rock movie. city movie um and roman fernandez partner of the great bill a coin We'll be doing a Q&A, yes. and hopefully we'll have, uh, have more about the effort to get Bill into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, recognition of his efforts yeah. as a manager. So, uh, obviously, more acts have been announced to join Peter, and that a date is, of course, January the 28th, 2017. I'm not being paid to promote this, by the way. I'm just really into it. You know, mm -hmm. LAKissExpo.com. <laughs> so... Thank you both for joining me for our 100th episode. I look forward to more episodes with both you and everyone else on the crew. Thank you for listening. Uh, chime in with your thoughts on Facebook, on on Twitter, I guess, on the FAQ message board or on YouTube. You know, would it make sense to have Ace back in the band or for him to want to be back in the band? And, of course, the second part of that, why is Peter always ignored, you <laughs> bastards? <laughs> so we thank you for your time today, and we'll see you next time. Hi, this is Alain from Japan. In addition to being a listener, I've been a panelist guest on a few shows, and I would have contributed more if it weren't for the time difference. My message today is very simple. A mega huge thank you to Julian and the Kiss FAQ podcast for existing. Thanks to the exposure in episode 48, my little book, The Illustrated Guide to Kiss in Japan, sold out two printings. 
first one in a matter of weeks and the second one just as fast. Even Gene Simmons got in touch to get a copy. So thank you and congratulations on 100 episodes. Hey, this is Joe. Congratulations on episode 100. Uh, it's, this is Kiss FAQ podcast is the best Kiss podcast out there, and there are, there are quite a few. But yours is the most entertaining. Um, I just wanted to congratulate you and also say that my favorite episodes are Topic Roulette. Uh, I love the Them Changes episodes. The uh, retrospective Peter Chris's music was awesome. I also liked episode 47 with the VHS tapes, but all the episodes have been great, and it's a great weekly listen. I really appreciate it. Um, favorite moments, there's so many. Uh, I love the, the, the main character cast with Lonnie and Ken and Julian, but the other guests have been great as well. Um, just most recently, I believe my two favorite moments are when Andy went into his uh, Kiss Casket um, adventures with the uh, people signing it and i also love julian's destruction of destroyer that's just great stuff and i just find it incredibly entertaining and funny keep up the great work and let's uh here's to uh 100 more episodes can't wait for episode 200 you guys gotta have an episode on the odyssey book please have an episode on the odyssey book thank you and i'm looking forward to another 100 episodes of KISS FAQ Podcast. Hey there, this is Chris, Marketing Force on the board, everybody's favorite moderator. And just to uh, chime in on our discussion about the first 100 episodes of the podcast, I'm going to have to say episode number 13 was my personal favorite episode thus far. And I think that the, the co-host on that one really made it. So it was a Julian pulled it all together, but boy, that guy was great. We've got to get him back on again. Here's to the next 100. Congratulations. Let's keep it going. Hey, hey, this is Saga Fu. Congratulations on your 100th podcast. Hey, guys. My name's Adam. I um, just want to say happy 100th episode. I really enjoy the podcast. Um, you guys do a great job. Um, probably my first episode I saw of the podcast was the video bootlegs. Um, I was just sitting at my desk one day at work on my lunch break and uh, just happened to do a KISS podcast search, and uh, I found the KISS FAQ podcast, <clears throat> and that was one of the first episodes I watched because um, I'm a huge uh, video bootleg collector, so I really enjoyed that episode. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm going to keep it short. Um, keep up the good work, and so long. This is Lonnie, STL KISS, leaving a message to congratulate the KISS FAQ podcast, and every participant on 100 great episodes. Thank you, Julian, for putting this together every week. It has truly been an honor and a privilege to work with you over these 100 episodes. I listen when I'm not on. I listen even more when I am on. Thank you, guys. Keep up the good work and have a great show. Hey, Julian, this is Andy. I just wanted to congratulate you on your 100th episode. Uh, I'm glad to uh, have joined in the last month or two in a uh, Many success, and I hope, uh, hope we continue on to a, another 100 to 200 episodes or more. Congratulations. Thank you for spending time listening to the KISS FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again. 